Hey guys, Ash here from CurseForward.com and welcome to my review of the Micromax Canvas 4. So let's start with the looks. The Canvas 4 is possibly the best looking canvas device that Micromax has ever made. Uh, the Micromax Canvas 4 is a very premium looking phone. You've got metal on the sides, you've got plastic on the back and front, you've got Corning Gorilla Glass covering the 5 inch uh, 720p IPS LCD display. On top you've got the sensors, the earpiece, the 5 megapixel front facing camera. At the bottom you've got three uh, the, back, the menu, home and back keys, the capacitive buttons. To the left hand side you've got the volume rockers. At the bottom the primary microphone, the micro USB port. To the right hand side you've got the power button. To the top the 3.5 mm headphone jack. Over here at the back you've got the noise cancelling secondary microphone, uh, the LED flash, the 13 megapixel rear facing camera, Micromax branding, the speakers. Inside you've got two full size SIM card slots, the micro SD card slot, the 2000 mAh battery. The Canvas 4 is pretty slim at just 8.9 millimeters. The Canvas 4 is a little heavier than the Canvas HD, it weighs in at 158 grams, but this is owing to the use of metal and actually feels pretty solid. It doesn't feel like a heavy device, it feels pretty solid. And yeah, you also have a notification LED at the right top corner. So let's talk a little bit about what's under the hood. The Canvas 4, just like its predecessor, is powered by a MediaTek Cortex-A7 quad-core processor, clocked at 1.2 GHz, coupled with a PowerVR SGX544 GPU and 1 GB of RAM, and the usual Bluetooth 4.0, Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN, GPS, USB OTG are also included. What's changed this time around is that you get 16 gigs of internal storage rather than the 4 gigs that you got with the Canvas HD. Games run pretty smoothly on the Canvas 4 with an occasional lag here and there. We have a separate video for the gaming test and I'll add a link to that in the description right below the like button and also annotated at the end of the video. Despite the battery remaining at 2000 mAh and the internals remaining similar to the Canvas HD, it seems a little better optimized and I was able to get a little bit more uptime with the battery before running out of charge than I used to with the Canvas HD. With moderate usage, you should be able to get a full day's charge out of this device. The Canvas 4 sports a 5 inch 720p IPS display, giving it a pixel density of 294 pixels per inch. Sunlight visibility is pretty decent and with Gorilla Glass on top, the display seems a little reflective. But nonetheless, the display looks crisp, vivid and colors feel natural. Let's now talk a little bit about the software. The Canvas 4 comes with Android 4.2.1 out of the box. That is almost the latest version of Jelly Bean. Uh, overall, it's mostly a close to stock experience provided by Macromax here. Right from the lock screen where uh, it's similar to the stock lock screen. Slide to the right, you've got the camera. To the left, you can add widgets. These are all Android 4.2 features. You can use two fingers to pull down the notification bar and access the quick toggles, which have been uh, edited, edited a little bit by Micromax. You can jump into settings. You've got your settings. You've got some extra settings from Micromax as well. You also have a few smart features. The upside silent turns your phone silent when you receive a call when you just flip it. Similarly, the upside speaker puts enabled speaker phone when you flip the phone. The proximity answer phone uses the proximity sensor on the phone to answer a call when you just pick the phone up and put it to your ear. Similarly, when you have a contact or message open and you want to call the person, just put the phone to your ear and the proximity dial phone does the contact for you automatically. You also have a scheduled power on and off. And you also get user profiles like you do with Macromax Canvas series usually. As far as apps go, Macromax have included some of their own apps as well as third party apps here like M Security. File, a file manager, uh, Fruit the Fruit Devil Game, uh, a game Micromax Game Hub, Phone Play, Kingsoft Office, M Unlock. We'll get to that in a moment. M Live App, M Live, the NFS Shift Game, uh, a pop up browser, and so on. The Darkman Game, and so on. So M Unlock is one of the features that's been talked about. When you turn on M-Unlock, you can then blow to unlock your phone or shake your device to unlock your phone. Let me show you how it works. So now let me just lock the device and unlock it. Now it says blow air or shake to unlock. So I'm just going to blow on the phone here.
and there you go it gets unlocked uh, but guys this actually uses the mic so you don't have to actually blow into the phone you can just say anything to unlock it let me just show you unlock phone there you go let me do it again open up there you go shake to unlock on the other hand works most times let's talk a little bit about the media players the video player comes with quite a few options that are generally only found with third-party players for example you can control brightness by sliding up and down to the left hand side of the player you can control audio by sliding up and down to the right hand side the audio quality seems decent it's not too loud a little bit on the lower side if i could say so 720p videos like the one you're seeing right now play play well without any issues. I've had some issues with playing 1080p videos. Micromax have also taken a page out of Samsung's playbook and included something similar to the Smart Boss feature found in the Galaxy S4. So right now, if I just look away from the screen, the screen would pause. And it plays when I look right back at it. You can also lock the screen by tapping this. So now the capacitive keys are disabled and so is the touch sensitivity on screen. You also get Macromax's own uh, music player with the regular options like recently played, newly added, albums, artists, songs, playlists and also an option of hitting Macromax's online music store. The gallery app is a pretty standard affair with the ability to use grid view or film strip view. One thing worth noting here is that when you're looking at pictures, at times it takes a few seconds to render the picture properly. You can see the redraw happening. Browsing on the Canvas 4 is generally fast and smooth. However, something I noticed is that when you pinch to zoom, there is a little bit of a jitter. This seems to be more of a firmware issue than hardware and Micromax should be able to fix it with a simple firmware update. Overall, despite Micromax including quite a few extra features like blow to unlock, shake to unlock, look away to pause or the smart gestures, it doesn't really interfere with the day to day operation of the phone and the phone feels fluid and smooth. The touch sensitivity is good, everything is pretty close to stock jelly bean and feels really smooth and fluid. Let's now talk a little bit about the camera app. Once you turn on the camera app, it actually shows you uh, a bit about the features, a little bit of a walkthrough, if you were to say, how to zoom in, how to, uh, how to access different options, and so on. So you've got a variety of features right from the HDR mode, beauty face, panorama. Uh, this is again a multi-angle view feature. Now you can just move around. and it stitches it all together to give you a little bit of a 3D-esque view. So that's pretty decent. And you've got scene selection, the smile and exposure settings and so on. The Canvas 4 also does 1080p videos at 30 frames per second and you can snap pictures simultaneously while shooting video. Generally the shutter speed is pretty quick and you can keep taking quick pictures and the burst mode works great as well. You can also shoot full 1080p videos at 30 frames per second with a front facing camera. Here are a few sample shots that I took using the Canvas 4. Under good lighting conditions, the Canvas 4 does take some great pictures. The pictures are crisp and the colors are pretty accurate. Under low light settings though, there is a lot of noise that creeps in and the quality is substandard. The flash doesn't really help either. But then again, this is to be expected in a device in this price range. As far as video recording goes, again in brightly lit settings, the Canvas 4 does a great job. So guys, in conclusion, is the Canvas 4 worth buying? Personally, I'd say yes. If you go ahead and do a Google search on the Canvas 4, you'd come across a lot of people saying, you know, being disappointed in it, even uh, Micromax fans themselves being disappointed in it. And the reason is not because of the device itself. The device itself is good. It's more, it has more to do with Micromax's marketing. 
This time around, Micromax did not release any specs initially and just released a teaser trailer that just portrayed the 13 megapixel camera and uh, the metal edge, the metal sides. And in the teaser, it also seemed like Micromax was taking a shot at Samsung. Samsung says the Galaxy S4 is a life companion. Micromax hits back saying, can life be endless with the Canvas 4? This led to a lot of speculation, overhyping the product. End of the day when the Canvas 4 came out, a lot of people were disappointed. In a nutshell, the Canvas 4 is an evolutionary change from the Canvas HD, which Micromax ended up hyping up as a revolutionary change. Uh, just take it this way, every phone these days, uh, wh whether it's HTC or whether it's Apple, sell with different internal uh, internal storage configuration. Uh, the iPhone, ha the iPhone. let's take the iPhone, iPhone 4, which is... Uh, the closest priced uh, uh, competitor from Apple to this uh, can to the Canvas 4. The iPhone 4 sells for 21,000 for the 8 gig variant and 25,000 for the 16 gig variant. For 8 extra gigs, Apple charges 4,000 extra. So look at the Canvas 4 as just another variant of the Canvas HD. 4 gigs, 13,000. 16 gigs, 17,000. So 4,000 extra for 12 gigs. So makes sense, doesn't it? And on top of that, you get updated front and rear cameras better software, and a huge step up in build quality. In my honest opinion, I feel that these things are worth the extra 4000 that uh, Micromax demands for the Canvas 4 uh, over the Canvas HD. So that's just my two cents on the Canvas 4 guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button because I'll be coming out with more videos soon. In the meantime, if you guys have any feedback for me on how the review was done, uh, if you want to see something changed, let me know in the comments below. What do you guys think uh, of the Canvas 4? Do you think it's worth 17,000 bucks? Do you think the Canvas HD is a better phone? Do you think the Carbon Titanium S5 is a better phone or uh, Iberia Nuclear N1? Or maybe Samsung Galaxy Grand or Galaxy Grand Quattro. Let me know in the comments below. And in the meantime, if you guys do have any video requests for me or if you just want to stay updated on my latest videos and updates, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, Twitter or Google+. The contact details to all my social networks can be found right below the like button in the description. So once again, thanks a lot for watching guys. Hope you liked the video. Uh, stay subscribed and I'll see you guys soon with more videos. Till then, it's Ash here from CurseForward.com signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.